ഹലോ എസ് എ പി ഡെവലപ്പേഴ്സ് വെൽക്കം ബാക്ക് ടു അനദർ എപ്പിസോഡ് ഇൻ ദ എസ് എ പി ടെക് ബൈറ്റ് സീരീസ് ഓഫ് ആ വെബ് സീരിയസ് സോ ഫാർ വി ഹവ് സീൻ ഹൗ ടു മോഡൽ എ സീരിയസ് വ്യൂ ഐഡൻറ്റിറ്റി എക്സ്പ്ലോറി എക്സ്പ്ലോറിംഗ് സം ബേസിക് ഫംഗ്ഷനാലിറ്റീസ് ആൻഡ് വെർച്വൽ എലിമെൻറ്റ്സ് ആൻഡ് ഹൗ ടു ഡു എക്സ്റ്റെൻഷൻസ് ഓൺ ആ വെബ് സീരിയസ് ഡേറ്റ മോഡൽ അനദർ ഇമ്പോർട്ടൻറ്റ് ഫീച്ചർ ഇസ് ദി ഓത്തറൈസേഷൻ ഓഫ് സീരിയസ് ഡേറ്റ മോഡൽ ആൻഡ് ദാറ്റ്സ് അവർ ടോപ്പിക് ഫോർ ടുഡേസ് എപ്പിസോഡ് വിച്ച് ഇസ് സീരിയസ് ആക്സസ് കൺട്രോൾ ലെറ്റ്സ് ചെക്ക് ഇറ്റ് ഔട്ട് in a map series authorizations for uh, reading data of series entities can be restricted using series access control uh, the motivation is the code pushed down to the database layer now the calculation is done at the database layer than the traditional application layer which gives much benefits series access control is based on data control language in short dcl and it will apply restrictions on the data selections of a series entity with a map sql so basically you get to see the data or perform actions for which you are authorized to you must explicitly define access control for each individual entity that you want to protect uh, now series access control mainly includes uh, series role series access rules and series access conditions so if access control is uh, defined for a series entity the access conditions are evaluated and only the data uh, that satisfies the condition is being read out uh, important features are um, access control can be defined for a view entity view hierarchy table functions uh, access conditions can be based on literal values like you can specify uh, the values on uh, classic authorizations of the current user based on authorization object that is the pfcg conditions or on uh, data from other series so uh, entities defined uh, by a selection with the current user we will check this in our uh, demo later uh, inheriting the conditions is another key feature where uh, the conditions defined in the access control of one entity can be inherited by other entities so this avoids duplicates now to create access control ADT is the tool that will be used to create modify and do all the other um, operations as well as maintain the entire life cycle of it so with this short introduction of access control now let's see how to define it and uh, check out the conditions so let's jump to the demo so for today's demo i have considered uh, flight demo data and i have uh, these two series views which i had used in previous tech bytes so now um, let's check uh, the data preview of the series view entity uh we have fields like uh, carrier id and other details so now let's see the annotation uh, required for access control so this is the annotation at access control dot authorization check which affects if access control should be considered or not so by default uh, the value is not required that means uh, if there is no access uh, control the user will have full access to the view entity uh but if there is an access control then it will be evaluated uh next option is uh, check so the random behavior is uh, similar is identical to not required it's only that when you apply uh, um the value as check there will be a syntax uh, warning uh, if the access control is not associated with the view entity third one is mandatory so this means access control must exist and if there is no access control uh, defined uh, for the particular uh, series view entity then Uh, a runtime error will occur and uh, use this for uh, entities which uh, for which the access control is critical and um, the accidental removal of uh, uh, the access control should not go unnoticed so this is quite uh, important uh, and the next one is not allowed where it says um, no access control is uh, allowed to exist so even if there is an access control then it will be ignored at runtime uh the last one is privileged uh, only so this is a special value which is uh, eval- evaluated by dedicated framework such as uh, saddle so i will use uh, check and uh, save and activate so as you can see there is a warning which comes up that uh, the access control is not yet uh, defined for this particular uh, series view entity so now let's uh, create access control so to do that select uh, the series view right click and then choose new access control uh give a name and uh, description choose or create new transport request in the next step uh, you will see all the available templates 
maybe let's choose the first one uh, which defines the role with simple conditions. We will check other templates uh, later on. So now the template is applied. The mapping rule is set to true. The CDS view for which the access control is defined is specified after grant select on. So this is the CDS view for which I am creating uh, the access control that is specified here. And now uh, let's add a condition maybe for uh, carrier ID. So for carrier ID, uh, let me give the value um, SQ. Now save and activate. Now let's uh, refresh the data preview of the CDS view entity. So now you can see that uh, the data only with the carrier ID SQ that we had mentioned in the access control uh, comes up. So this means the condition is picked up, uh, is, being, well, is coming up from the access control. So this is a very simple way where the value is uh, specified in the access control. Uh, but in most of the cases, um, you have the authorization object and authorization uh, field, uh, which is uh, the classic uh, authorization based on PFCG condition. So uh, to enable authorization checks uh, in your area, uh, you can create authorization field and bundle with authorization objects. Since I am using uh, SAP BTP ABAP environment, I have created authorization object and authorization field uh, over here. So the authorization field is, cre uh, is created for uh, the carrier ID. And now let us use this in the access control. Uh, if you have a SAP system, then uh, you can create the auth object and uh, the auth authorization field and also have the, uh, the required authorization, default authorization values maintained for your user in the SAP, in the SAP transaction. Now, let me use uh, this authorization object and uh, the authorization field, which is created for the carrier ID in the access control. So that is done in this way using PFCG condition. So here I will specify the auth object, the authorization field, and the authorization field also can be multiple, and then you will specify the activity type. So let me save and activate. So what happens here is, uh, CDS access control takes this information and the authorization of the current user and uses it to create a logical condition. So that is evaluated every time the object is accessed. So for my user, I have uh, set the default authorization to for this carrier ID as yay yay. And uh, so now let's uh, check the data preview again, refresh it. And you can see the changes in the data now, because we applied the authorization object, which has the authorization field of carrier ID, and uh, for my user, I have um, the authorization value maintained as AA, I can only see the data for which the carrier ID is matching. Um, maybe let us also add uh, another condition, like where we can specify the value. I will add a AND condition, and then maybe uh, take another uh, field, seats occupied. So I'll specify this condition here. Now let's save, activate, and again, see the data preview of the CDS view entity. So the data changes according to the conditions that is specified in the access control. So now these conditions uh, can be inherited in other uh, CDS view entity. So ZC underscore flight is actually, it consumes the data from ZI underscore flight. So now first let us check uh, the data so that we get to see the difference when access control is applied. Um, so now let us uh, change the authorization check value and uh, create access control for this view. I will uh, add as check and then again I will save and activate and now choose uh, the view right click and then create new access control. So again, I repeat the same step, give the name, description, choose a transport request and in the template selection, uh, let's choose define role with inherit conditions. So the, uh, the code is generated from the chosen template. Now here you specify the CDS view entity from which you want the access condition to be inherited. So in our case, it is uh, ZI underscore flight. So let's save this and activate. And let's see the data preview of the, the CDS view entity. So now you can see the access condition has been inherited from the base view in which we had uh, specified the conditions.
So in this way, when using the inheritance, it will actually avoid the duplicates that you can uh, inherit inherit the conditions from other access control and use it associated with the CDSU entity. Mm, now, in case, uh, if the CDSU has uh, parameters and uh, you want to specify um, the parameter conditions as well, you can do it do that also. So for that, uh, let me add a parameter to the CDS view. So I'm just, uh, uh, I just want to show you the syntax and how it is um, uh, evaluated. So let me add the parameter, uh, the target currency, and uh, you can see the warning over here that this parameter is not used. I'll not be using it, but this is just to show you the syntax, how it will be evaluated in the access control. So I'll save and activate. Now I'm going to add the parameter condition to this access control. Uh, so here I will specify the value of the input parameter and if this value matches with the input parameter of uh, the CDS view entity, uh, then the result accordingly it will be retrieved. So let me give uh, the value here and now so let's uh, check the data preview again. So you get a prompt to enter uh, the value for the input parameter and I will give euro here and ideally we should not get any data because in the access control I have defined as UST. And uh, here I'm giving as euro. Well, this is not the ideal example, but I just wanted to uh, show how uh, the conditions is evaluated. So uh, in this way, we have checked three conditions. That is uh, de defining a simple condition that is a literal condition. And then the PFC is then defining a role with PFCG conditions using authorization objects where you can specify the authorization object, authorization field, and the activity types. You can add multiple PFCG auth conditions giving multiple uh, auth objects and uh, authorization fields. Um, then we also checked the defining the role with inherited conditions, where you can inherit the, the conditions from the underlying CDS view entity. And then lastly, if you want to check uh, if an access control is available for a particular CDS view, this is how you can do it. You have to just um, right click, select the view, right click, and then used, select where used list. So in the next screen, uh, you can choose access control and then you get the results of uh, the access control where this view is used, this control. So this is where you can just uh, use, uh, get where used list and then um, check the uh, associated access controls. So this is a very simple example on uh, how to get started with uh, access control. Um, where you can specify uh, the standard values and uh, especially use the PFCG authorization concept and uh, the inheritance concept. And uh, this is the end of the demo. And I'll see you in the next episode uh, with another functionality as usual in the next TechBite uh, series. So until then, keep learning.